years. So this is called suboccipital release, sometimes cranial base release. And it's something that is very gentle um, for both the practitioner and the patient because it uses the weight of gravity in the patient's head to really control the amount of force that's being imparted. So the way that we can do this is begin with a neutral headpiece and first we want to be palpating in through the suboccipital musculature because we'd like to identify if there are regions of hypertonicity, if there are myofascial trigger points, if there are areas where the patient can tell us they experience tenderness, or better still for our diagnosis, a reproduction of their familiar pain or a component of their familiar pain um, that is part of the reason that they're in to see you. So having palpated through, let's say you identify a spot on the right that is reproducing some of their chief complaint pain as well as some generalized hypertonicity on the left side. So that's a good indication to apply a bilateral contact which is what we'll learn for this procedure. So in this we're going to have a broad cupping contact at the posterior aspect of the skull letting the fingertips and typically it will be either three or two fingertips that you'll use to exert your pressure depending on the area of musculature involved, how much of it is involved. The important thing to note with this technique is that we'd like to pull towards us with the fingertips compressing the suboccipital musculature into the skull rather than exerting our pressure straight from posterior to anterior. And this is because of the presence of a number of sensitive neurovascular structures at the posterior aspect of the upper cervical spine that we need not apply direct compression to. So we're interested in working with the muscles and we can help isolate our compression to the muscles by pulling them upwards into the skull and letting our pressure rest there. So at this point I've pulled some of that suboccipital musculature superiorly against the occiput and now I'm just letting the head rest with that as a fulcrum point, with my fingertips as that fulcrum point. And then depending on the level of pressure, the patient's tolerance to that pressure, you can support slightly with the palms or you can release that support and let the full weight of their head apply that compression to the suboccipital musculature. Doing this for one to two minutes at a time is good. Checking in with the patient, doing a repetition or two if necessary is also fine after that point. But it's good to check in, make sure that the patient is feeling okay. Of course, they're told to report to you um, at the beginning of their visit with you if they experience any symptoms like dizziness, change in vision, level of consciousness, things like that. Um, but we don't expect any of that to be going on because we've already done the complete examination that helps us to rule out things like upper cervical inst instability and vertebrovasilar insufficiency, problems like that which we need to rule out before we do our manual therapy for the neck. So again, just trying to keep your hands as soft as possible throughout this procedure, let the weight of gravity do the work, and of course encouraging the patient to breathe in a slow, rhythmic pattern using the diaphragm, allowing things to become as calm and relaxed as possible. Best way to help these continue to let go. So, pretty simple. Again, the main thing that we need to look at is that we're pulling that musculature up into the inferior aspect of the skull. So we're doing the superior tissue pull, and that prevents us from pushing just straight into the neck between C0 and C1. <coughs> so, any questions on our cranial base release, aka suboccipital release? Okay, let's practice this on one another.